Hello, good day, welcome back. So today we're gonna start with part one of the implementation for LS utility. LS is a program you'd find in Unix-like operating system for listing directory. And so our requirement is gonna be that our LS application or utility should accept um, some arguments and those would be the files or directory you wanna list it should also support the minus L option for specifying long listing. And if you don't specify any option, then it should just default to listing the current directory, the contents of the current directory. When you specify the minus L option, we're just gonna list the permission of the file or directory, its size, and of course its name. So let's start by preparing our project directory. And that basically means, you know, our main.go file, but we're not gonna write anything just yet. We're gonna go look at the documentation and then sort of figure out what is it that we need to implement. So let's go look at the man pages for the LS um, program. As you can see, it tells you about if files are passed, not directory, how it lists those, and if it's a directory, what it, how it lists that. And we're not gonna do the whole um, list things in lexicographical order, so we're gonna ignore, ignore that. Then uh, we're gonna look at the minus L option documentation here. And again, we're gonna ignore the part about the total um, size for all files in that directory when you have a minus um, L option. So again, we're gonna simplify a lot of things. So what we should do now is play with the built-in LS to see how it works. So of course you see when you type LS without no parameters, uh, it lists the current directory. If you type minus L, then it lists, I'll do a long listing of the current directory. I'm gonna create some directory and touch a file, create some files in those directory, do LS of it, and just show you how it lists that. So it lists the name of the file first, followed by the directory, and then the files within that directory. Then, of course, if you do minus L of that, then it shows you a long listing of that, um, pretty much the same thing. Again, we agree that we're gonna ignore that total output there, so we're not gonna worry about that. Um, when you specify a non-existent file or directory, it puts that first. So we're gonna try and replicate as much as we can without going too far overboard. So let's start coding. So we know that we have to parse the command line looking for our minus N option, which is gonna tell us if we have a long listing. So we're gonna do what we did for our echo program, essentially the same thing. And so that's pretty straightforward. Once we parse the command line, now we could just determine if we're doing a long listing, call a function that would take care of a long listing of the remainder of the arguments. If not, and then we return, of course, if we're doing long listing, because there's nothing else to do after that. If not, we do a short listing and um, of the remainder of the arguments. Again, pretty straightforward. And we can pretty much start off by just testing this to make sure that we end up in the right place once we build this and pass it no arguments or with just the minus L arguments alone. And so we're gonna do a build. So we can get like a um, command that we can run. And then now we run it with no arguments and then with a minus L arguments. And this is looking pretty good so far. So we have our short and long list. So we're looking pretty good here, but we can make things a little nicer and cleaner. We're passing the same argument to long and short listing functions. So why not put that in a variable? And of course, if we make this change, we wanna test it to make sure we don't break anything. And so it looked like if we were able to build it and test it. The next thing we wanna do is address the case when um, our arguments that we're gonna pass um, is zero, which means we weren't provided any file or directory. In that case, you wanna, of course, pass the current directory and a that in Unix means current directory. Okay, so we can start writing, flushing out the details of our shortlisting um, function. And just remind ourselves what that looked like. Well, it's just a list of the files that were passed in, so fine. But we have to check if they exist. So if they don't exist, then we of course want to print out the error message about the file not existing. And so that's the first thing. Then the next thing is that we have this file info object. We certainly know if um, this is valid that we can check and see if it's a directory or not. And if it's a directory, well, of course we can deal with the directory listing. If it's not a directory, then we, we know it's just a file, assuming that FI is valid. But look, let's just test this and see what is getting us so far. So of course, when we build this and we do a LS alone, that works. But what about if we pass a non-existent file name? Well, this blows up. And that's because when it, the non-existent file name, we end up um, going over instead of continuing. So if we try a file name and it doesn't exist, we shouldn't try to use FI. We should actually loop around because FI is null. And so now if we build and test again, that's looking good. And so of course we're not listing the directory yet, but 
we certainly want to take care of if it's not a directory let's say well now we know that fi is valid then we can say that oh, this is a file and we just want to print the file name and continue and so we test this and yep there's a, this is looking decent and so now we're in a position to start working on flushing out how to list a directory but before we work on the directory listing we still need to do something about um, how we handle a number more than one non-existent file or even how we list file so let's take an example look at this when we list multiple non-existent file it's mixed in with the file that exists but when we try the built-in list it doesn't show it this way so let's go fix that and one way of fixing that is to just accumulate non-existent files in their own list files in their own separate listing and then the directory entries in its own listing and then literally print them out in that order so we're going to create slices for no files for the no files that are specified or you know non-existent files um, a separate list for files and a separate list for directory listing and then we'll just go um, modify where we store the result instead of writing it out at the time when we detect it we will write it out into the loop so we're going to loop over all the arguments that are specified and find files that don't exist and put them in separate lists and the files we put them in one list and then if it's directories we'll process that and put it in the, the list also and then at the end of looping over all our arguments then we're going to be able to print them out in the order that we want and so this is pretty um, straightforward i think um, just to have a slice and append on to it and for now we're going to assume that our we again we're ignoring the details of a directory list and we're going to assume that we're going to call a function to take care of that for us and so now it's just a matter of printing out the list of non-existent file, list of file, and the list of directory entries. And so we can build and test this. And now when we run it, it looks better. Our two non-existent files appear first, followed by our file, and then the directory listing. And now we can go back and fix the extra new line and run it again. And again, it just looks a little better than before. So this is the home stretch. We can knock this out. So let's start by implementing our um, function here to get a listing of directories. And this is, we're using the OS package to get manipulate files and so on. So there must be something in the OS package that would help us get a list of directories. So let's go take a look and see if there's something there. So we're gonna pass in a slice that we want to get directory function to append the list of directories to. But is there a function here that can help us? And uh, if we scroll down and we look on the file itself, there is something I call real dir, and it tells us that return a slice of file info um, objects that represent you know the files in that directory. So we can use that. So let's go and open the directory that we're given. Because remember, if this function is called, we know that our f is a directory. Now we really don't even have to test it again really for an error, but let's just try it. Maybe, we'll, maybe the open would fail, not because it's not a directory, but because we don't have permission to open it. So again, if um, we can open it, we return an error, but if we can open it, we'll get a list of directory. But look there, there's that read directory names. This seems more um, like what we want than read dir, DIRs, read dir. So let's go and check out what is this read DIR um, entry names. And when we look, it return a slice of directory, uh, um, a slice of string for the files in that directory. So it means then that we don't have to loop over a file info object and then use that to get the fi actual file name. We can just get a slice of um, the names of the files and directories in F. So of course we're gonna pass zero to get the entire listing. Um, we, we don't know how many they are, so we don't wanna limit it. And um, then we're going to check it and make sure that our disk call doesn't fail. Once it doesn't fail, well, we just loop over those strings and append them to the list that we have. But before we do, we want to stick into that list the name of the directory that we're going to be listing. Because remember, that's sort of the format of the built-in LS program is when you have a directory, it puts the name of the directory, colon, and then the list of files. So let's test this. And we don't see any result. That's because we have a bug in our code here. When we call the directory, it appends to the list and it has a new slice that was created as it append, and we don't return that. So we need to return our slice and save it because just in case the slice is modified. Now, if the slice wasn't changed, like if we had passed in a big enough slice, this wouldn't have been a problem. Because remember, when you pass a slice, it 
passes a reference to on the to the underlying array. So when we save, build, and retest, now we can see that. Uh, we have the directory A there and the listing of what's in directory A. And we can add directory B. And of course, when we run it again, it shows directory B. But it doesn't show it quite like the built-in listing um, version, which puts a space between the directory listing, a line before it. So we can easily fix that by removing this line on 68, the sprint out, and then just add it inside of our directory function to say every time you build a directory listing, it should prepend a new line before the directory name. And so once we do that and um, rebuild our program, we'll see that our, the output is going to look pretty much exactly like the built-in LS program. So let's go rebuild that and run it. And there you go. The space between before, come, uh, new line coming before the directory listing. And um, when we look at the two, they look very, very similar. So again, this is a lot of work, um, but we know enough now to start, um, you know, building out um, the LS app, um, program. Um, it's not very sophisticated. It wouldn't have all the options, but we are putting the things that we've learned already to use. All right. All right. Thanks for your time. See you in the next video, part two, where we're going to implement for the LS option. And there we're going to put size and the permission for whatever the directory and file is. Um, keep spreading the word. Keep coming back. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. Thanks for your time again. And thumbs up the video. See you in the next video.